This is Keyed In with Max and Brent, unlocking the minds of the industry's top real estate professionals. And now, here are your hosts, Max Rabin and Brent Jackson. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Keyed In Podcast with Max and Brent. I'm Max Rabin. And I'm Brent Jackson. So, Brent, today we're interviewing Daniel McDonald and Andrew Becker from TTR Sotheby's International Realty. Now, Daniel and Andrew run a top-selling sales team here in Washington, D.C., and we're definitely looking forward to this one. Daniel and Andrew are going to tell us about their systems approach to real estate. They do things a little differently than I think you and I, which is we're always interested to hear these things. So, guys, welcome to the show, and it's nice to see you. Great to be here. Thanks for having us. Excited to be here. Where Where are you guys joining from? Just curious. Are you in town? Uh, we are in the Arlington Subbies office. Okay. And so. I'm super excited for this one because I'm a systems guy, Max, and I've been watching these guys grow you know, for the last, I don't know, 5, 10, 15 years. Stuff that they're doing is stuff that I've wanted for our group to implement for, you know, for a decade. And I'm looking forward to jumping in, learning about all their systems and how we can put some of their stuff into what we're doing out here in the field. Well, they're going to give you all their all of their secrets. Secret they're going to thought. take all all of it, just all of the information. So, Daniel and Andrew, how did you guys get started in real estate? How long have you been in real estate? How long have you been doing this? So, we started in real estate in 2013, and I guess just to give a little more background, even we met in seventh grade. So, we grew up together in Burke, Virginia. I went to the same middle school and high school. I went to different colleges, but had always stayed in touch and talked about going into business together. We had a painting company together in college. So we had done a little bit of work and we got different. We, we started careers after college that were not in real estate. I was in financial services and Andrew worked for the government. Um, I graduated, we both graduated in 08. And then in 2013, we decided sort of finally made the decision to we don't want to be employees the rest of our lives and it's time we do something. So ultimately we landed on real estate. We got our licenses and that was when we first, yeah, that was when we got licensed. We really formed, started forming our team in 2015. And at first it was just me full time in 2013. Andrew was still um, at the government, but in 2015 he came over full time. And that's when we really started building something a little more organized and serious. Why real estate? Good question. We we had a lot of different ideas. We thought seriously, we thought we had a great concept for the most delicious chicken sandwich <laughs> in the area. And we were like really thinking about a few different ideas. But it, I think it was at the time we were watching like HGTV was getting popular. All these shows were getting popular. And I think we thought it would be fun. It would be something that we could probably do. And it didn't require like, an immense amount of capital to get started and that i think that's why we got licensed and but we we sort of went into it with absolutely no idea what we were doing we didn't work for a team we didn't really have coaching or mentorship at the beginning so it was like reading and listening to podcasts and trying to figure out how can we convince someone to let us sell their house and we sort of like just shot from the hip for a couple years until we started to uh after a couple of years is when we actually started to get into masterminds and coaching and things like that and started to really learn how you how you build a business. We, we had started to figure out, OK, how to, how to sell a house and maybe how to be effective in a presentation. But it wasn't for a couple of years that we learned really about running a business properly. So you were going to mastermind events in various places to learn more about this? Yeah, it was a couple of years in that we thought there's other people doing this like well, there's a lot we don't know and i think other people are running better businesses than us so let's try to learn from people who've already done this before so yeah we started going to workshops and joining other groups of realtors around the country who would get together and um talk about their businesses what was working and what wasn't and we started to learn a lot after we did that that's fantastic so when you were first starting out so you were you were focused on getting into real estate sales like the, you wanted to be sales people and so how did you, what were some challenges when you first started out? Cause, because now we're, we're going to get into some of the systems you have in place, but when you first started out, you, did you not have any systems in place where you just tell us a little bit about first starting? Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> we did a lot of trial and error shooting from the hip kind of thing, but we didn't realize the importance of having systems in place. So we quickly realized that, you know, we had sent out mailers 
and we'd put our cell phones on the mailers and then we would have no real way of tracking when we got a call. We didn't know if it was a personal call or a business call. So we knew we had a problem there. And then also we didn't really want to just send mailers out and have no way of knowing if our return on investment would be there or if we're spending money and making money or losing money. So one of the first things that we did was we put a, a solution where any marketing period gets its own number, right? So that number would be called letter one. And that number goes out. And then on our phone, we would put it in as the contact. So that would call and we know it'd be a business call from letter one. And letter one was to sellers. So we know it'd be a business call and it'd be, it comes directly into our, our CRM as letter one direct mail. So we're starting to track all this stuff now. We know how many calls we got, how many appointments and agreements, et cetera, all the way through to close. The other thing would be uh, that really helped was it would record all the calls and it, re it records all the calls for us. So we can go back, listen to the recording, see what the call was about. And then the last part was we didn't want to be come off as unprofessional. So when you call a business, you expect to talk to someone, not get an answering machine or have it ring and ring. So we have an answering mm -hmm. service answering 24-7, 365, any calls that we're not able to get to. We might be in a meeting or with our family and we just can't get to it. So they answer the call. They give us a summary email moments after the call is ended. And then we get that email on our phone and we can see, you know, it was a sales call. We don't need to worry about it. Or, hey, this person called our letter and they want to sell their house. This is a hot lead. I should probably call it back. So mm -hmm. that first and foremost, transformed the way we were able to operate. And that's led to probably one to two deals that we probably wouldn't have had if we just let the call go and had no idea that a call even came in. So that's been a tremendous efficiency for- Probably for one to two deals a month, he means. Um, uh, a month, yeah. Like where, when we were missing calls, you know, when you have a missed call, you might reconnect with them successfully, you might not, but- when you get a summary message sent to you that it's someone who wants to sell their house, you're a hundred percent getting back to them. And so I, I think it's helped us just not lose anything as well as have sort of a professional appearance. I mean, the goal is to answer every single call live, but sometimes it's inevitable that something will get missed. So mm -hmm. that sort of saves it. And just to give you a little more context about our business, a lot of our, our business was really built from the start on, on outbound marketing like we didn't we didn't have huge networks we or maybe we were reluctant to work our network i mean we were from virginia but we didn't find like tons of immediate traction by like telling our friends that were real estate agents and asking if we can help them buy or sell so we had to quickly figure out how to get in front of people who wanted to sell so we were doing direct mail we were doing cold calling we were doing websites and so we had lots of different things out there to see if it might work, to see if it might get us an appointment. And that's why this was such a help to really figure out like where exactly was that call coming from and what isn't working at all and we should get rid of and what actually is working and we'll do more of that. So when you were first starting these, okay, so let's go back. So you're talking about the system that when a call comes in from like letter one, um, and it's recording the call or it's a 24 hour system. This is, this isn't something you had in place right away. Is this, is this, this is this what you've developed now or was it a different version of it then? Tell, tell us more about that. Yeah, it wasn't something that we started with. We started with putting our cell phone numbers on. Our right. Mind. The cell phone. Right. Okay. Better. But yeah. as we grew and really it had to become more efficient. So we didn't lose deals or lose opportunities. Yeah. This is just one of a part of the, the entire platform that we have working in tandem together. I think in the sequence of of time, we started out with nothing. Then it went to spreadsheets. Then it went to, we started to learn about software. There's lots of software out there in real estate. And we started to t do tons of research. And we found a lot of good tools. We found lots of things that were really helpful, helpful for tracking, helpful re for reporting, for communicating. And we put all this stuff together. And that was probably two, three years into the business, we started to do that. And it started to work and it, and it was a good solution. But then a couple things happened. We, number one, it like very quickly got really expensive. We almost didn't even notice it till we started to look at the bills and we were like into the multiple thousands of dollars per month with all these tools. And then on top of that, I remember 
this might have been one of like the initial things that got us on the path that we ultimately went on, which was we were presenting at an event on our business, not on software or anything, just on our business. And we were showing some slides. And uh, afterwards, a couple of people came up to us and said, like, what was that thing you were showing? Like, what was that report? What, what, like, how do I get that? And uh, can you build this for us? Can we buy this from you? Right. And we didn't have a way really to give it to them because it was just like eight different software products that we integrated. And the only way we could do it was to charge maybe a, either spend a ton of time for nothing or charge a one-time fee to build it for them, which would take a long time. It was like totally not any way we could deliver this in a reasonable way. So we thought, number one, it has to be sort of on one system. And number two, it has to be something that doesn't require building again for one person. Mm -hmm. We ended up realizing if we were going to give this to other people, which it seemed like a lot of people were asking for it, um, we needed to come up with something that we needed deliverability, like fast and easy deliverability. So we did that, but we've only had that now for the last two, 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 three years or so. So you developed your own platform. Yes. Is that, is that the platform you developed with, with Salesforce? Yes. So nice. correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it didn't start off like Dan said, it was kind of like a hodgepodge of all these different accounts. And sure. number one, it was expensive. Number two, it was hard to maintain. If something broke, we had to figure out what part of the eight or nine different accounts or systems broke it. So it became difficult, but we realized, and this was through a lot of, I demoed for like three to six months with every CRM out there, even talked to consultants about building it from the ground up. But we landed on Salesforce, number one, because we knew data was going to get protected and they had good servers and it was never going to shut down or break, right? So that was first and foremost why we landed on Salesforce. But the uh, second part was it was all native and it's all one system on the Salesforce platform. We don't have to connect eight or nine different systems. It works and it gets delivered to a customer okay. through a downloadable link in a matter of minutes versus, hey, if you want it, here's the blueprint. We have to find someone to build it. It's expensive. It's time consuming. Now it's just almost instantaneously delivered right. to a customer. Brent? And, and can you guys go, again, I'm in awe of the systems. I'm going back thinking uh, we just implemented, we've been doing this for almost 20 years and thousands of dollars a month in flyers. We just did our first letter. We followed Andrew and Daniel and, and, and their scheme. We met with them a, a few months ago. So we got our first letter out. It's we have a buyer in Forest Hills, which we do. It just dropped this week, Max, and mm -hmm. we're, we're getting bombarded with calls in a way that mm -hmm. it's set up for us is it rings me for 10 seconds it rolls over and rings rings rob for 10 seconds and then if rob misses it it goes to the answering service which is great because we've had five calls and you know bless rob's heart he'll answer every single phone call i think i haven't answered one he's answered four and they're all four like take me off your damn list i hope right. you die and, you know things <laughs> like that and then even the one that the answering service picked up you know they have caller id but we have a scripted you know four or five questions that they asked they did give us the address they did not give us their email they did not give us uh, the time frame one to one to sell and they gave us a fake phone number but the caller id picked up their real phone number i had rob call them and the uh, same response like take me off your list but all it takes is one person to call. Sure. We have a legitimate buyer. So that's good. I, I think that it's a great system. And it's like a small portion of what they're you know doing with, with their database. And you guys can even go into like the ISA, which that's a whole nother gamut in the industry. So, yeah, I have my follow up question to you guys is so maybe you could walk us through one whole marketing patch for you guys so i get i get letters from you guys too just so you know like you guys you guys blanket the area i think i've got a few letters from you guys but it's not to say that there obviously we're out here we are definitely looking for listings in our market all, all the time but particularly lately we have a super low inventory so how do we find these people how do we get to them sending out letters cold calls is a very traditional thing are people still doing it as much not so much but you guys are still still doing it so like when you do a letter right? Talk, talk to us a little bit about how many letters go out on one marketing campaign. Give us an idea. Hmm. Roughly, I mean, it changes and we look at our data and see 
mm-hmm. you know, what this letter was made up of, what that letter was made up of. And then and we have different campaigns for different okay. ideas yeah. and locations. But anywhere, I would say roughly 5,000 to 8,000, maybe 10,000 pieces. Yes. It, it just depends on what the list is made up of. So it's a lot. I mean, it's a lot. It's 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 more than the typical like standard postcard mailing campaign. Obviously, those postcard mailing campaigns are very expensive. We're sending out like glossy stuff. So I mean, it's, it's an expensive venture to do this. So you you having the systems in place once you have sent all these pieces out. If you don't have the right systems to gather the data back, you're kind of blowing it, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even to the even to the point where they're they're labeled, right? It's so like the one that we just sent out. It's like Forest Hill All Cash Buyer. So if they're sending out like fifteen different letters, it's it's easier as a as an agent when you see the caller ID coming in and it's like, oh, it's a sign writer. Oh, it's a flyer. It's flyer A, flyer B. I mean, like that much thought into it goes a long way because you know exactly what to say. Caller ID comes in. And it's like, you know it's a it's a sign writer right oh great thanks for calling today which property you're out in front of how can i help you because you know it's a sign writer call i mean i think what you guys are doing it's, it's brilliant yeah definitely it's definitely been a game changer for us in terms of efficiency because we were struggling up front at first when we didn't have that letter coming in or the sign writer contact coming in so we were almost fighting an uphill battle just am- answering the phone but now we know how to answer the phone and we have an idea of where they're calling from and that that was a tremendous advantage for us and direct mail is only a part of the business it's not even the majority of the business but we do this type of preparation and system around any marketing campaign including you, you know, online are you guys still doing the classic cold call as well we stopped. It worked mm-hmm. for us for a long time, but we don't do any of it anymore. Just too many, too many hangups and too many, like, and it's, what is it? Why, why don't, I'm just on any. Yeah. Why did we end up stopping? I mean, we, so we <laughs> didn't do it. We didn't do it ourselves. We had team, we had people yes, working for us who did it. And I think now we're sort of in a world where a lot of people don't answer the phone. Like it, it eventually just sort of stopped being productive. And that that was really why. I, I think for the first few years, people would pick up and it, we got a lot of conversations that way. And it was a lot of no's, but there it also, there were yeses and it led to appointments. But we probably, when we stopped, which is probably a couple of years ago now, there was probably a six month period before we really completely pulled the plug where we were getting virtually no success from it at all yeah so i guess back to max's question so you've sent out a letter to georgetown can you walk us through the process of when that call comes in who it's going to where it's recorded to who's going to meet the person yeah andrew do you want to take that sure so i guess it starts with we we come up with an idea to send a letter to georgetown in your example we get a phone number and we label it Georgetown. We put it in our system as Georgetown Mailer and the system's connected. So it automatically will flow in. So it's ready to collect that data point and that, that, that call. So we send out the mailers and people start calling. How we have our setup, it's through a flow where our sales team, we have inside sales agents who their main priority and their main role on the, on the team is answering inbound calls to vet the call and see if it's worth setting up an appointment for our agents to go on in the field. So they would go and, and meet the person. So they the call comes in, it'll say Georgetown Mailer on their phone. They'll talk to the person. We have a script that they use, you know, are you selling, when, that sort of thing. Get a really good idea of what their situation is and if we can help them. If we deem that it's something that, you know, we can help them with, we would set an in-person appointment for an agent to go on. And then that agent is made aware of the appointment and goes on the appointment. And sees, you know, if we can. Andrew, tell them about the appointment setting, assigning, post appointment process. Because to me, that is important and there's a huge change for us over time. So someone calls and it it comes into our our CRM, our billion CRM. And it's caller ID. It says Brent Jackson. Here's his phone number. He called off of the Georgetown mailer. It's a direct mail piece. So raw lead in there that way. Every lead comes in that way. So we know where it's coming from. Peter or Casey, our ISAs on the team, will have that conversation and then ultimately set the appointment, right? So now we're at the appointment stage. We hit a button and we tell the system, 
an appointment has been set, they fill in the pertinent details. There's mandatory required fields. So we track what we need to track. So nothing kind of gets left, you know, unknown for the agent. So there's a set of fields that get filled out. They hit, you know, submit. And that appointment goes to the team calendar at first. We get an email. Dan and I get an email and our, our operations and lead management team get emails that Peter set this appointment in Georgetown. We read all the notes. We see when the appointment is for, and we, we kind of read through and get an idea of what that appointment is about. Then we tell, we, we talk and we tell the system, okay, we want Dan going on the appointment. So we'll assign that appointment to Dan. So he will, we'll tell the system, we'll hit a button. Dan's calendar will get populated with that appointment automatically for him with the notes included. He'll also get a notification about an appointment and he'll be given that lead profile automatically. So he'll be able to read everything he needs to read, see who said it, what campaign it came from. Pretty much have a really good idea of what that appointment is about. He'll prepare, he'll go on the appointment, and then he'll tell the system when we, when, you know, he holds the appointment, regardless of what happens, if it was held, not held, you name it. He gets reminded and says, Dan, tell us what happened on the appointment automatically out of the system. So in the past, we had, you know, we set a lot of appointments and we'd be like, hey, what happened on this one? Where are the notes on that one? This took the manual follow up out of it for us by automatically reminding us mm-hmm. that Dan went on this appointment and he's yeah. yet to submit his post appointment notes. So Dan fills out his notes and then we get an email saying, Dan went on the appointment. It was held. He signed it. Here are the notes. It was an in-person Everything that happened on that appointment gets sent directly to us. And then behind the scenes, all the reporting that's built into our CRM is getting updated in real time. So when the lead came in, that marketing was updated with one call from that marketing Georgetown piece. An appointment was set. So now we're tracking that this one call came in. We have one appointment from it. Dan signed it. Peter set the appointment. So he's responsible yep. for setting one appointment from the Georgetown mailer. And then that tracks all the way a closed deal essentially so the entire time we're just updating the system in real time getting those numbers in real time and the data input in real time and that saved us a tremendous amount of manual work and and really is the main reason why we're able to focus on other things because that's not really on our radar anymore just because yeah. and there's oh. multiple layers of of helpful reporting there so not just that the direct mail piece the georgetown campaign led to a signed agreement but also that Peter set up a signed agreement that Dan got a signed agreement. So my conversion rate, which is constantly being tracked, has now improved a little bit. Whereas if I had sent that back and it wasn't signed, my conversion rate's dropping a little bit. So it's got analysis of like every element of the business from from the advertising to the to the people who are working in the business. So there are some other CRMs that do similar things, but yours sounds like it's obviously tailor-made for what you guys enjoy about tracking these various data points. Have you, are you licensing this? I I mean, if you created a a whole piece of software, it sounds like, is this something that like, this is another business for you guys? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we formed a partnership with Salesforce to build our concept on the Salesforce platform. And, and it's a new company where it can now, where our exact, model what we use in the business can now be used and like andrew said before you can now download it and have it in a couple of minutes and you don't really have to develop anything or create anything on your own amazing and i'm not sure maybe there's one other mega team down in virginia that kind of does what you guys do carrie shaw but i don't think outside of her and the dmv to my knowledge anybody's doing what you guys are doing again can you talk us, so you guys started in 2013, everybody gets their their grounding and trying to find out their way in this industry. So when you guys found your way, can you quantify how your, your new platform has you know, grown your business? Meaning yeah. like you, know, how much, like you guys doubled your business, tripled? Yeah, that's a really good question. I don't know if we could quantify sort of how much more money we've made per se by being on the Salesforce concept by being on our platform than than we were before. But one thing that I think I can say that Andrew and I have periodically said to each each other over the last couple of years is we feel like we have so much more time than we used to. Like when you when you start using it, you're not like, oh my God, this is amazing. It's just sort of something that 
it's like email or your cell phone. You just, you don't really notice it. It's just in the background. It's just the way you're operating. But we used to spend so much time, like at the beginning of our career, it felt like we had to work all the time, like 2013, 14, 15, 16, like so much work, so much communicating with each other, so much notepads and spreadsheets and going through email, like felt like it was just work all the time. And now we're doing more business. And I feel like we have so much more free time. And we didn't exactly know why that was. But we're like, I think it can probably be attributed to now, like when he talked about the appointment example, like getting the information automatically to the agent and getting the information back automatically and the reporting happening automatically. Like that used to be a lot of manual work. That used to be like a lot of conversations, a lot of emails and texts. And now like, we don't have to do anything and it happens. So I think maybe more so, I certainly couldn't say that it, we grew by 22%, but I can say, I think it has freed up a ton of time and in our business time is money. So I, you know, I'm sure we'll make more as a result, but it, it 100% will give someone more time. Well, regaining your personal time though, is like, that's everything. That's your life. So if, yeah. if you've got that, then you are winning. It doesn't like yeah, money's right. money, but before right. we had it set up the way we have it now, we had coaches, we had mentors and I would be sweating when I knew I had to meet my coach on Friday and it was Monday. And he was like, I want to know how many leads you got and how many appointments from those leads and how many agreements, because I had to go and spend hours like backtracking and, you know, updating spreadsheets. And I, I had an idea, but I didn't know if it was accurate or if I was missing anything. So it gave me a lot of stress. So with this, it's like, tell me how many leads you had and I can reference a report and I know automatically. So it's changed from an operation as the chief operating officer of the team. It's changed my, changed my level of stress and really decreased it because now if you just follow the platform and, 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 you know, follow the process that we have, those get updated behind the scenes for you automatically, which has been life changing. Follow the yellow brick road. Are you guys still fielding calls? I mean, that's personally. Yeah. Yes. Like you guys so do this. We're aware when a call comes in, but our ISAs, our inside sales agents, Peter and Casey, they're the the primary team members that feel all of our calls that come in. So what? How do you? So okay. What? How do you? How does your team work then? So you guys obviously like you guys are on a big things. Like you've got this, your names on the team with the under the Sotheby's brokerage, but you've got, you've been working on the software, you've been working on refining these things. How does the rest of your team made up? Like who's doing, who is, who's the one meeting the plumber to move the gas? Go out, just who, like, tell us about your team. So the composition of our team is we have three. So we're both licensed agents, but we don't do a whole lot of sales today. I, I do a little bit working for clients who I've worked with for a long time, or maybe close friends or family, but I don't take a lot of new appointments. Same with Andrew. So we have three licensed real estate agents on our team who do the vast majority of all of all new appointments and new opportunities. We have two inside sales agents. So they yep. they take the calls. They they are the first in line for the online inquiries and the in the email inquiries. And then we have two virtual assistants who um, basically help us with administration and operation. So people. If, if someone contacts us because they want to sell a house or they want to buy a house, they first will talk to either Peter or Casey, who will set an appointment for one of our agents, and they are conducting virtually all the sales. And we're basically responsible today for, in effect, running, managing the operation, which is marketing and advertising, training, talk. I mean, I talk to basically everyone on the team every day, but I just, we're, we're talking about things that need to be talked about as it relates to deals or opportunities and not a whole lot more than that. And Andrew deals more with the virtual assistance in, in any system related stuff that needs to, that he needs to do. But he as chief operating officer, sort of, he almost like built himself. I think he did this because he (laughs) didn't want a job anymore. He was our chief operating officer and he sort of built a system that like almost could replace him, which allowed him to really be the front man on developing the developing the 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 new business the 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 licensed sales force so um, he's a modern day john henry <laughs> yeah for those that remember john henry <laughs> so i mean obviously you guys took a straightforward concept you're like you want systems in place you wanted to 
to build this team with the proper systems and you so you guys can to set back and not deal with like the uh, annoying aspects of doing the real estate business. You've got a fantastic tool in place, but your team doesn't sound like it's super huge. I mean, if you've got the mastery of this system, have you thought about expanding your team and running even more agents with this platform or what's the next steps? Do you think? We could, I mean, that there are so many possibilities. In fact, we, we have a, we're in a beta group now and we have a, one, one of the customers in the group is a mega team, more than a hundred licenses. And they, I think they do hundreds of appointments a month and more than a thousand deals a year. So they're on the system. So you can operate a business like that off of the platform. Um, we, I think Andrew's focus now is becoming helping other agents and teams start to start to get on the platform start to use it start to adopt it start to learn it and i'm i'm still mainly working in the real estate business but i don't think at the moment we haven't made like plans to grow enormously i I think we found sort of a comfort level with our with our existing team people are pretty experienced people you know i think we Sometimes when you grow, like growth is tricky. You have to like really grow with the right people. That was another lesson learned along the way. So um, we don't have like immediate plans to, for massive real estate growth, I would say. So with your expertise, what would you, what advice would you give? Like, let's say maybe it's not an agent who wants to join the McDonald Becker team, but a, a new agent who is trying to figure this all out. You guys have done the traditional thing and you built this technology is that some advice you would give to young agents? What what do you what kind of advice do you give to people right now? Advice to new agents, I would say get a coach or mentor really early on. Joining a good team can be a way to do that and do some business along the way. If you can't afford like paid coaching or mentorship, I would just really try to network with people who you look up to, who you know are experienced. I think we made big strides when we started to get advice from people who knew what they were doing. So and, and we've always talked about if we had just started, if we had gotten licensed and gotten like really effective training from the start, we'd be so much further along than we are now instead of sort of like just guessing for a few years on what to do. So I would say that would be my number one piece of advice. And then secondly would be don't be afraid to try stuff. Try, you know, there's not a one size fits all to this business. Some people are effective by calling their friends and family and open houses and networking events. And some people like us have had success with mail and online and SEO and these sorts of things. So just try, you know, be creative, try anything and just work with what works with your personality. Yeah. I'll add if you're going to try not friends and family, but you're doing paid, just have an organized way to track your spend and track your leads. So you know what you're doing, get rid of what's not working, put a fence around what is working and ultimately start to scale that up but have an early plan to know how you're going to handle these, these inquiries and these calls that are coming in. So you guys have a great letter campaign and you have a good system to track it. Can you tell us like what letters are working out in the field and like maybe which geographical area, if it's a neighborhood in DC or Virginia or Maryland? It's a good question. We, we've had success. It's interesting in this business that sometimes an individual opportunity in itself can be very valuable. So you might send a campaign that might only translate to one, but because it was a really good one, it had a great ROI, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you get a lot of responses on that mail or in that location. In terms of what has worked, I think testimonials help. We we added testimonial sort of a year or two in. And I, I think that helped. Is that on the front of the page or do you guys do like both sides of the sheet? We've been a using worst? a second sheet. Um, okay. for the testimonials. And and we recently sent one where... To Georgetown? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was... So it was looking for opportunities for, for some of the builder clients that we work with. And it was it like actually walked through like a, a project that was completed to, to really like let people know we're really doing this. So this isn't like a, a gimmick really are looking for a property that would be a good opportunity for for redevelopment 
here's a property that was that was bought and redeveloped. It may be your neighbor if you know if we were selling to a particular area where there was a project that we did. And so real life examples or references and real life testimonials, I think help a lot, but it's just a numbers game. You sort of just have to be there. You have to consistently send, like you can't evaluate these things after like one send because it's not going to make anyone want to sell their house. You just have to sort of be there when someone decides they want to sell their house. So you're sending the same letter campaign to the same group of individuals, like once, five, 10 times. If it's producing, there are times where we'll send a letter campaign and like get almost nothing back. And we will not send to that group again. And so we sort of always have to evaluate like the group we sent to and the mail piece we sent to. And if it's a proven mail piece, it might be the place we sent it. If it's a proven place, it might be the mail piece. So we're always sort of evaluating that. But what was the question again? Well, I'll add, Brian, he was asking like, how long do we send? Typically, what we'll do is we'll have that second sheet. We'll have anywhere from two to three testimonials of real deals that we did and and put together from like maybe the last mail campaign. So we'll send that on average five times. And then on the sixth time, we'll start over and kind of revamp the letter, have a new phone number, of course, and then swap out the testimonials from ones that we would have been given from the last mail campaign. So on average, I'd say about maybe five or six mailings per actual letter. If we're getting calls, like Dan said, if we don't get any calls, We know there's something wrong and we did something that it just wasn't working. So we might pull the plug a little early. But if we're getting calls and it's leading to appointments five or six times before we swap it out and and try another one. So what's what do you what would you say has been the most rewarding part of your business? I mean, real estate, we're all like we're talking about numbers and and uh, return on investment. But I mean, real estate, we're dealing with people. So tell us about like the passionate part of real estate in your business. Tell us about the rewarding side. Sure, I think talking about the the software part of it is we built something that we thought would be good for our team. And it's been wonderful for our team and it's very helpful. We got what we need out of it. And then once we started to show this to people and people had awesome positive feedback, we're like, how can I get it? And we actually delivered it to them and hearing how they're using it and it's changing how they operate. Brent, when you sent me that email two days ago about, the answering service. And, you know, you got an email and it was really cool and you were excited. I was excited because you were excited because it's something that we put together and like, I'm helping you're, you're now getting helped by having someone answering your calls when you can't get to it. So that was really cool. And it made us feel pretty, pretty pumped about that sort of thing. No, Rob and I are, you know, we love this whole system thing. It's like, we, we're going back and forth, even though we're getting the the hate calls now, it's still, you know, 10 seconds, I don't answer, it goes to Rob and he's answering or not. And it's like, and then we get a recap of an email that the answering service took. And it's like, this is awesome. Like, why would we ever answer the phone? Like, you know, let the flakes go to straight to answering service. And if they're yeah. real, they're going to talk to the answering service and give us the recap anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's really nice to like know number one, who's calling. And then also if you happen to miss it to know, I don't need to call that one back. They they gave me their address. They said, remove. Okay, we'll remove it. But if you see, oh, it's someone who wants to sell their house and they want to talk, you know, you might actually get up and leave dinner and go make that call. So it just helps you evaluate whether you need to take action right this second or not. This is a question for Max. Is a veteran agent, you know, we've been doing this for a while. You've been doing it for a while. The the part that I had struggled with at the on the onset was giving away my phone number or, or taking it back, right? So you put a, a fake number, so to speak, on a flyer. Would you and Jonathan be okay with like some random number? It's going to you, but it's just not your phone number or Jonathan's. As a veteran yeah. agent, it's been doing this forever. Yeah. Well, well, it's, a, it's not a fake number. It's a real number. It's just go, it's, it's a different right. number. Like, yeah, I, I've got to say, I mean, I'm still doing this kind of in the old school way. And I'm hearing them talk about um, it It creates it, it still work to to put the system in place and get it up and running. And then there's money going to be spent to get the campaigns running. But, you know, I just started using follow up boss and it's already I've already bought time back. And if just implementing a few of these other ideas that they've said, like, the phone number on the mailing that's specific to the mailing that would automatically allow the information, whatever calls we're getting, whatever information to flow into whatever system you have set up that does this. And there are a lot, and there are other systems that do it. 
But I mean, I think it's a fantastic idea. I certainly thought about it. We haven't done that yet. We do have uh, a team phone number, which was a new thing for us instead of all of our individual numbers on everything. But no, I love it. It's a fantastic idea and it makes total sense. And we're in an extremely technological age right now where people people definitely want to have that personal connection with a realtor. I think that's one of the things that we maintain in order to still have this business, because I think there are people who are out to get us, as you may have read recently. But, you know, that's it's what people expect now. They 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 I, they would probably expect it to be more high tech. And what these guys are doing is is on the level. So it makes total sense to me. Right. I think it's more professional too, right? Like if you're calling a doctor office or any professional office nine to five during the weekdays, you expect somebody to answer the phone, even though we're, we might be with a client, we might be at a closing, a home inspection or what have you. Having an answering service is like an aha moment. Like, why didn't I think about this, you know, 15, 20 years ago? 100%. Well, guys, if there's anything else you want to add, um, I think we covered like all the the top stuff for you guys did you have anything else that you wanted to just add to any of the questions that we've already asked or no i don't know i think we i think we talked about a lot of it andrew anything coming to mind that you feel like we left out that would be useful no i think we did a pretty good job covering what we wanted to cover yeah i think i would just say for any listeners out there we're we're an open book we're happy to help you know if this is something that's interesting to you reach out but even if you want to just chat about business operations and systems in general, feel free to reach out to us. We're always interested in talking about this kind of stuff and how to how to make all of, I mean, this business is so tough and we really want to think of ourselves not as competitors, but really as allies and how we can all sort of just have better lives and gain more of our time back. So feel free, don't be afraid to, don't hesitate to email either of us and happy to get together and talk. Are you guys, I know it's in a beta form, but are you allowed to mention your platform? Like what, what your app is? Yeah. So it's called the Billions app on Salesforce. Okay. So they want to reach out on the Billions systems and platform. They can reach out to you guys directly. If Max and I get a, a phone call or an email, we can direct them to you guys. Sure. Yeah. If anyone does want to reach out directly to me, that's no problem. They can send an email to a b at joinbillions.com and we'll okay. we'll set up a time to chat and I'll see how we might be able to help. That's fantastic. Well, I really appreciate everything you guys shared with us today. You guys have been amazing. Our last part of the show is our rapid fire questions. Brent's going to hit you with those. Let's okay. do it. Rapid fire. First, when you guys mentioned you guys listen to podcasts when you first got into the industry, is there any podcast you'd recommending to veteran agents or new agents that are listening? The podcast I first learned about real estate, uh, especially lead generation in real estate was bigger pockets. I listened to that for a few years. I haven't listened to it in the last couple of years, but we got tons of good ideas just interviewing people around the country on how they were how they were drumming up business. So I found that to be pretty helpful. And then if you're not listening to Keaton, you should be. <laughs> there. Thank you. Last concert you guys went to? I think I went to a Black Keys concert in Charlotte, North Carolina. In what year? <laughs> I don't. I don't even know. Um, <laughs> now that I have kids and and you know pandemic and all that, I probably four or five years ago. To be honest, I'm going to a Brian concert in two months, but I haven't been to a concert in a long time. He's a country folk singer that we found on YouTube, and he's playing down in richmond in june who is that again what's the name his name is zach bryan um, okay. you, have you heard of tyler childers yeah okay so sure. we were listening to tyler childers and he was a recommended artist and he's he's like that and we became big fans and looked up tour dates and so we're gonna go see him in june awesome which friend character are each of you <laughs> from the tv sitcom mm. good question I don't know. Take all day. Just take. Your- <laughs> I see a little bit of Rachel and Andrew. <laughs> Not only Rachel. I see a little bit of Joey and Dan. There you go. Rachel and Joey, got it. It's awesome. What is your favorite chicken sandwich? Mm. I I like the new one from McDonald's. If you haven't had that, it's pretty McDonald's. good. If you haven't tried it, I highly recommend that. That's so not boutique. 
It's I know. Yeah. I was okay. shocked about how much I like it. And before that, I'll have to say number six from Wendy's, their spicy chicken meal was my go-to. I think I'll go with the spicy chicken sandwich from Chick Fil A. What was your all sandwich? I'm just curious. You guys said you were it was, creating it a sandwich. Was a spicy chicken fries. We we had this idea before this blew up across the country, like years before. We had the we were working on this in like 2012, and we were convinced we came up with the best hot sauce for a chicken sandwich. And then we started researching how to build a business around this, and I'm not sure we thought we had what it would take. So we sort of just left it alone. Yeah. But we had some delicious chicken sandwiches in the process. It was the what could have been story. We could have been the first to market with the spicy chicken sandwich that people loved. But it just didn't happen. It wasn't in the cards for us. I could see we'll this on like, Netflix in like 20 years. What could yeah. have been? Yeah. Well, I'm just I'm just gathering, though, because you guys like you're trying to do a chicken sandwich. Then you got into real estate and you've been friends since seventh grade. I mean, you guys have like a that's a pretty solid friendship relationship. You guys are like you've done a lot together. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I don't get to say that. He's the only person I get to say that about in my life that I'm still friends with from middle school. So it's pretty cool. Nice. That's awesome. Last question here. Any predictions for the rest of the year? It's been going like crazy for the last, you know, four months. Anything predicted? Gosh, such crazy times with interest rates the way they are maybe heading. You know, not sure what to expect with inflation. I I don't know. We're taking it day by day. I think... uh, any prediction I would make would have a high probability of being wrong later. So I'm probably going to withhold from anything <laughs> and just, just hope for the best for all of us. Andrew, anything to add to that? No, I mean, I wish we all had that crystal ball, God but I also yes. don't want to go on record with anything. They'll most likely be wrong. So day by day, like Dan said, is all we can do. Well, we ask this question every week. And if you go back, two months and listen to the answers then and now everyone's like "Mm, not so sure it's just you never know you don't know what's going to happen one day the next it's really crazy right well guys incredible interview really really good stuff thank you so much for coming on we always give a donation to the charity of our guest choice so if there's anyone you want to give a shout out to we will make that donation please let us know like right now sure so we're big animal uh, lovers. Dan has an adopted pit bull. Ginger, I adopted two cats, Frankie and Pretzel. So Animal Welfare League in Sherlington would be great. That'd be fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, guys. Guys, have a great day. Thanks for coming on the show. Really thank you, guys. It. Thank you, guys. Thanks for listening to Keyed In with your hosts, Max and Brent, unlocking the minds of the industry's top real estate professionals. For more information on selling your home, find us online at keyedinpodcast.com. Remember to subscribe to Keyed In on Apple Podcasts or wherever you like to listen to podcasts. Follow us on Instagram at keyedinpodcast, at Max, and at Brent E. Jackson. And follow Max on TikTok at Maxwell Rabin underscore properties. Oh, 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 oh.